We're here surveying for black-footed ferrets. Basically what happened to ferrets is what happened to prairie dogs, and that species has declined by 98%. This is possibly the most critically endangered mammal in North America. There's a very high desire at the, at the federal level to see this Kansas site succeed as a ferret recovery site. It's wildlife observation and anything can happen out there. You say these prairies come alive at night. It makes any difference how many times you do it. It's so adrenaline you get feel when you see those eyes. This is the fifth year of an effort to try and reintroduce endangered black-footed ferrets to northwest Kansas. And so as part of uh, the monitoring for that, we come out twice a year, once in the spring, once in the fall to just survey the population and find out how many animals we can find. It's a bit of controlled chaos. Lots of cool buttons down here. Don't Don't <laughs> Charlie, yeah. take this radio. Look at all these buttons. You're in charge of the radio, I got three Charlie. buttons here, I got six buttons here, I got two twisty knobs on top. Okay, somebody left their little soft pouch for their GPS unit. We get together, we, I, I go through sort of the process of here's what's gonna happen, here's, you know, here's your, or your equipment you're gonna use, here's your data sheet. You know, there's, you have a pasture map to show you where you're going to be going, how to, how to get, we get the, the vehicles all outfitted with spotlights and radios, you know, radios to communicate with one another. Um, each, each vehicle gets a GPS unit because out there in the middle of the night, there's not a lot of landmarks to see, so you can track your progress and find out where you are within the pasture that way. We're spotlighting, we're just started our survey and we're covering kind of the whole entryway to this pasture. Look for any eye shine at all. Uh, once you see something and you can ID what it is, which if you've been out here long enough, you kind of have a fairly decent idea. All animals have eye shine at night. Um, you take a very bright spotlight um, and you shine it through the, the grass, through the prairie, and then it reflects off the animal's eyes. And depending on shape and color, you can, you can know what kind of animal it is. Animals will reflect different colors of eye shine. Rabbits glow red. Um, so a fox will kind of switch off between yellow and green, depending on how they're looking at you. Um, coyotes are a lot of times are orange. Badgers are green too, but they aren't as bright and they're wider spaced. So um, you can identify a lot of animals just by, based on their eye shine. Um, so clearly we were looking for the green eye shine, which is the black footed ferrets. And we try to pinpoint exactly which burrow they went into and, and then kind of the fun starts. We have these live traps, which are just kind of a, a long mesh tube with a, with a trip plate and a trap door. You actually deploy that into the trap, so it becomes an extension of the burrow, essentially. And it's wrapped in a, a blanket or some kind of fabric or something, partially to keep it warmer because, you know, it's, it gets cool at night. We don't want a ferret to get uh, over chilled waiting for us to come back. The idea being that the ferret will come back out, walk up the burrow, keep walking up that trap, get past the trap door and step on the, the treadle plate up here, and the trap door will slam shut behind him, and then we'll have a ferret car. Now we are gonna take the ferret to the vet trailer where it'll have all of its workup done. We have veterinary help that will work them up and uh, you know, kind of do a whole body workup on them, check them for um, just overall body condition, figure out if it's an adult or a kit, or, you know, a yearling animal. We try to keep this very stress-free and as quick as possible for the animals too. We anesthetize them, we put them up on the table, continue on a, a small mask, and, and it's a gas anesthetic that we use, much like your pet dogs or cats would have used at the veterinary hospital, um, much like you might even have used in humans in a hospital too. So it's very safe, very effective. You know, each animal, when we do them, we put a hair dye marking on their on their throat and upper chest and that way if we see that same animal during the same survey period we won't put a trap on it try to catch it again and when they got their head up and got their their legs back under them pretty good we take them back out and release them in the exact hole from which we took them it's very likely that's not their den hole but that's the last place they remember being and so it kind of minimizes disorientation a little bit you know i'm sure they still have this you know 
captured by aliens feel about them when they wake up and you know people are staring at them but uh, you know it probably minimizes the disorientation at least they're back someplace it smells familiar to them it looks familiar to them and we're, the idea, we, we make sure that they go down in the burrow before we leave them. When we trapped ours that I could actually look down in the hole and he popped his little head out and looked at me I was like ecstatic. I'm yeah. pretty sure I was grinning from ear to ear and if he hadn't been there and I wouldn't have been embarrassed, I probably would have done a little happy dance, <laughs> not gonna lie. We are out there supporting conservation of something that is near and dear to our zoo. It's a, it's a regional species. It's a critically important thing. It's, it's, it's one of these things, we're talking about small conservation programs, of small groups, but critically important. Anyone who knows ecology knows that we're talking about a web, the ecological web where everything interacts together. You save, a, an elephant, you're saving the environment that elephant lives in, including small animals, so it's a, it's a large project. Um, so for a species like the ferret that has been um, removed from an ecosystem because of something that humans have done, uh, and because of different beliefs that we had when that happened, you know, 50 years ago, predators were viewed as a bad thing. Um, so we felt that, no, humans felt that if we eliminated predators, we would have more prey species and they were the good ones. Um, now we know much more intelligently that you need the entire ecosystem to function. And so in order for it to be healthy, it needs to have all of its parts, kind of like an airplane. You're not gonna get in an airplane that doesn't have a wing or that's missing a bunch of nuts and bolts from you know the wing. And so we don't necessarily know which parts are the most important, so we wanna make sure that we have all of those. Um, so the opportunity for uh, Kansas zoos to participate in a project that returns a missing link from a prairie ecosystem was just an opportunity that was um, a very natural fit for all of us. Uh, it's a matter of just retaining and bringing back something that is critically important to us in the whole balance of nature.